classically cut 80 centimetres of uh, your ribbon of choice. So I am choosing pearl in our single-sided satin, so 80 centimetres. And then um, I'm putting the ribbon out in front of me like that. Now, I'm right-handed, so I work to my right. But if you were left-handed, you would work to your left. So it's exactly the same instructions. You just work one way if you're right-handed and the other way if you're left-handed. And we point that out in the instructions too. Um, and as Grace says, there is also a video on our YouTube channel, so you will uh, be able to watch it over and over again. I do a voiceover with it, obviously, and you can really easily pick up the technique by uh, watching that over again. Uh, but you start off with the 80 centimetres of ribbon in front of you, and this is literally a folding and twisting technique. There's no gluing involved, no sewing at all. It's literally just a folding and twisting technique, and you just need a little bit of patience, and then you can make the most beautiful bouquet or accessory. So ribbon out in front of you, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ribbon and I'm going to fold it over to my right. So uh, as Grace said, we've chosen the ribbons in this kit for a reason, in these kits for a reason, and that's because they've all got a little bit of form to them. Um, there's a little tiny bit of stiffness, which means that you can fold them and put a slight crease. We've got lots of beautiful ribbons in our collection, but quite a lot of them are quite floppy and would not be good starter ribbons if you're learning how to make roses. Um, so you really need to start with something like this, a nice good uh, ribbon with lots of form in it. So I fold it over to the right and I have made a little crease there, so um, a 45 degree crease. Then I take the ribbon and I bring it down towards me. Again, I fold. So. Um, all the instructions are in the kit. I say, uh, I think I say two centimetres, about a two centimetre measurement along the top there and seven centimetres down the side. But it really doesn't matter. You'll get a feel for it and you'll just end up making them in your sleep. You're just basically looking for a uniform shape. You'll see as I carry on. So that looks a little bit like a rooftop, you can see. Now I take the ribbon and I fold over to my left and pull it down straight, make a nice neat shape and then crease like that and that basically is my shape if you can get it and your ribbon into that shape using your fingers to hold the corners in place then you're you're happy you're done and you're ready for the next part which is literally just building up on top of the shape there's no more to it at this point really you can stop thinking and just carry on on top of the pattern so here we go again ribbon goes up to the top a crease as you can see, I'm just moving my fingers around the shape to keep everything in place. And this is the little bit that requires just a little bit of thinking, just as you move your ribbon from the side back down again and folding and creasing, you are just moving your fingers around to ensure that you're keeping the shape nice and as neat as you possibly can. It took me a few goes to perfect this, so, you know, um, You've just got to literally be confident and uh, know that there's something really beautiful at the end. Um, but just keep going like that in the same way as you work your way around. And you'll see that there's a, a hole in the middle and you need that hole in the middle. I've taught this um, on courses and uh, the thing that we sort of learned whilst uh, I was teaching people was Try not to make your hole either too big or too small. If it's too big, it'll be quite hard when you get to the twisting part. And if it's too small, you'll find it hard to actually even begin the twisting. So you just need a nice, a nice shape in the middle, a nice square shape. As I say, you will get the feel for it. Um, you don't need to worry too much about the detail. You will get the feel of it. So basically, that's my folding done, literally. That's the shape. It's, a, it's an octagonal shape. and um, that's that's as, it's as simple as that so once you have done all of your folding all you've got to do now is pick your shape up so grasp it really firmly you want to keep that shape nice so i've got, I've got it nice and firmly there between my fingers and thumbs and um, i'm going to now let go with my right hand if you're left-handed you would do it the other way you'd let go you'd be holding with your right hand and let go with your left but i take the end that i've just been folding with and I don't know if you can see, but I am now I'm pinching it and I'm poking it down through that hole that I told you about. And if I turn it over, you can see it's coming out underneath. That little piece is coming out underneath. And that's what I want. I'm going to now grasp that, turn the shape back over so we're back in the position that we were. And this is where the interesting bit begins. I'm now going to begin to twist. 
So I'm holding my shape firmly and I'm twisting clockwise. Now if you were left-handed, you would twist anti-clockwise. But I'm just holding the ribbon. Now you don't pull, it's very important not to pull because otherwise you'll just pull all of those um, creases that, and those layers that you've made, um, you'll pull them all the way through. But as I twist, you can see the beginning of the rose will begin to form. There's my centre look. And you'll see, now if you look here, I need to move this finger down to the next layer to release the ribbon. Hope you can see that okay. And I'm twisting and it's just forming. So all I'm doing is literally releasing my finger down each layer of ribbon and twisting around. Not pulling, just twisting. So magic. I've never heard the studio is so cool. <laughs> oh, we should have a camera on all the studio crew because everyone's just jaw-droppingly. Just in literally. A... And so all I've done is just basically just keep twisting like that. So there we've got our rose. I'm quite pleased with the way it looks. Every single rose looks different and they look different in each ribbon that you use as well. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with that. So now you can be quite firm with your ribbon. You can cook your rose. You can grasp it. You don't need to worry about it. And the end that you've got here you just wrap really firmly around what you might like to call your stem. So nice and tight, because what you've got to remember that this is just a twisting technique. So all of the security is going to be in your twist and um, also your cotton. So to keep it nice and um, tight. So here's my cotton. I'm going to now just tie really, really tightly and firmly. I do quite a few layers and I'm quite I'm quite brutal with it because <laughs> I want it to all stay in place. Nice strong loops and then just snip off. I can let go. I don't need to worry because I know I've secured it nice and tightly. And all I do now is a double knot just to, and that's all it requires, with the cotton and snip it off like that. Depends what you want to do with it. If you wanted to uh, add it to a present, you wanted to hot glue gun it to a present, you might want to leave quite a lot of, of stem here. Um, but I'm going to cut a little bit off and then show you what I would do if I was going to add it to a bouquet. Um, I'd literally get the wire, which is provided in the kit, and you can, uh, the wire provided in the kit is um, 30 centimetres long. Um, and I generally cut it to about 15 centimetres if I'm going to make a little rose for a bouquet. And you're literally just taking it around the top of the stem there, twisting the wire. This is just floristry wire, twisting it on like that. And then you've got a nice stem to add to your bouquet. And then turn your rose over and there it is, all made just from 80 centimetres of ribbon, a rose, simple as that. <laughs>